In this video, we are going to practice performing uh, operations on rational expressions. We're going to add, subtract, and multiply. In most cases, the first step is going to be to factor. In problem number one, the first thing I notice is that um, the numerator here is backwards. Let's rewrite this in descending exponential order. So this would really be negative 2x squared plus 4x. Now let's factor everything and see if anything will cancel out. And uh, for multiplication, that's really all there is to it. You're just going to factor, cancel out whatever you can. There's no need for like denominators like we need for addition and subtraction. Just factor and cancel. Um, so if I factor this numerator, um, that's going to give me um, a GCF is negative 2x. So that's going to leave behind x minus 2. All right, notice it has to be a, a minus 2. If I do a negative 2x times a negative 2, that will give me positive 4x, because a negative times a negative is positive. Um, and then I'm going to factor the denominator. x squared can only factor as x times x. 6 uh, is probably going to be 2 times 3. All right, could have been 6 times 1. Um, to make negative 5, both of these would have to be negative, all right, because that gives me an inner is negative 2x, outer would be negative 3x. Together, they make negative 5. All right, also I get positive 6, which is important. Uh, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. So similarly, let us factor this numerator x squared will factor as x times x. 3 can only factor as 3 times 1. Uh, inner plus outer equals middle. Inner, I have 3x. Outer, I have uh, 1x. I'm trying to get a middle of negative 4. So both of these would have to be negative to make negative 4x. So that means both of these would be negative. And negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. So, th so that works out and I'll just bring down my 2x. So we have factored everything. Now let's look and see what will uh, cancel out. Well, I see I have a x minus 2 here and an x minus 2 here. Those are going to cancel out. Uh, what else? I see I have a x minus 3 in the numerator and an x minus 3 in the denominator. Notice it doesn't matter that these are in different fractions. Um, when you are multiplying, it's really like you have one big fraction. Um, if this were addition, we could not cancel things out at this stage. We'd have to make like denominators and put them together. But when it's multiplication, if you have a factor in a numerator and a factor in the denominator, even if they were originally in different fractions, uh, with multiplication, you can go ahead and cancel those out. All right, anything else you see that we can cancel? There is actually one more thing. Um, see the negative 2x and the positive 2x? Um, you might be thinking that we can't cancel these out because one is negative, one's positive. But the reality is that negative sign uh, can be left. So I can cancel out the 2x and the 2x. Um, but the negative sign won't cancel out because this one doesn't have a negative sign. I'll just keep the negative sign, but the 2x can still cancel out. Think of this negative sign as a negative 1. So we're canceling out the two x's and we're leaving negative 1. Okay, so what is left? After everything cancels out, um, what I have is negative and then x minus 1. So this is the final answer. Okay, another form of this would be um, you know, because if I distributed the negative sign, it'd be negative x plus 1, which is the same thing as 1 minus x. These are other versions of the same thing. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it like this. And uh, let's not forget the excluded values. x cannot equal positive 2 because of this denominator. x cannot equal positive 3 because of that denominator. And x cannot equal 
0 uh, because of the 2x. So these are my excluded values. Notice that the negative 1 in the numerator, the x minus 1, has nothing to do with my excluded values. Okay, uh, moving on to number 2. <clears throat> so this is a subtraction problem, so it's going to be a little bit different. Um, we need to make like denominators when we are subtracting, something that we didn't have to worry about for multiplication. You don't need like denominators. You just sort of factor and cancel, and that's it. No like denominators needed for a multiplication problem. Um, but still, first thing we're going to do is factor. So I have uh, n plus 5, nothing I can do with that. But in the denominator here, uh, GCF, I'm going to have 3, and then n minus 2. Please do not leave this as 3n minus 6. That's a common mistake. Uh, you definitely want to take out that common factor. Now we need to get the uh, denominators to be the same. They already have 3's in common. So what we need is the n minus 2 to make them be the same. And I'll have to put the n minus 2 here as well. Now please uh, notice this negative sign goes with the 4. So it's really like this. It's like this is a negative 4. Um, so when you do your distributive property, the negative has to be distributed with the 4 as a negative 4. Okay, so I have my like denominators now. So I can put these together and keep my common denominator of 3 times n minus 2. Now I'm going to put my numerators together. So I will have n plus 5. Now um, here comes the distributive property. So I have negative 4n plus 8, not minus 8, plus 8 because negative 4 times negative 2. All right, so now I'm really just going to combine my like terms, and that's going to be it. So negative 4n and positive n, that makes negative 3n. And then uh, 8 plus 5 is 13 over 3 times n minus 2. So that is going to be the answer. Uh, excluded values, n cannot equal positive 2. All right, notice that the 3 is just a constant that does not contribute anything to our excluded value list. All right, let's move on to number 3. OK, um, so again, this is something different. Uh, on the last problem, it was a subtraction problem, and that's it. It was not an equation. There's no equal sign. We were not solving. I didn't cancel out any denominators. Um, but now this is an equation. See the equal sign? All right, we are solving. We are solving. Um, so we're still going to start off the same way. We're still going to uh, create like denominators. Uh, but this time, once we have the like denominators, we will cancel those denominators out and continue on to find out what P equals. Um, there's nothing to factor, so I don't have to worry about that. So um, how do I make these the same? Well, this, it'll be pretty easy. They all have um, P squared. So uh, this is just going to need a 3. All right, so I'll have to multiply by 3 up here. Um, and this one will also need a 3. So I'll multiply this by 3. That's all it took to make the denominators the same. And uh, because this is an equation, it's going to be different because um, once you have those like denominators, uh, you can cancel them out and form a new valid equation. So I'm going to have 6. Now watch out, y'all. Um, this negative sign has to be distributed okay to both of these so um, I'm gonna have negative P as you would expect but I will also have positive 4 that's the big mistake that I see over and over again watch out for it on a subtraction problem just like on the last problem this negative sign had to wind up being distributed with the 4 alright this time there's no coefficient but the negative sign must still be distributed Okay, um, and is equal to 3. So uh, the rest should be pretty simple. Combine your like terms, so that's 10. So now I have negative p plus 10 
is equal to 3. Uh, we could subtract 10 from both sides. So that's negative p is equal to negative 7. Th then we can divide by negative 1 uh, to make this a positive p. Um, so then we will just have p is equal to positive 7. Um, that's the answer. We're also supposed to state the excluded values as always. Um, so p cannot equal zero because uh, of the p squared. All right, notice the three, again, does not contribute anything to our list of excluded values. Okay, let's move on to number four. Again, this is an equation. So that's when we make like denominators and then cancel out those like denominators. So uh, it's going to be very similar to the last problem. This time we do need to factor. So um, I have my 1 over n. All right, but um, you know, I'm not going to factor this numerator because I'm just going to have to combine like terms later anyway. So I'm going to leave that alone for now uh, and just leave 4n plus 8 like it is. Um, now, but the denominator here, I need to factor this. So it's uh, just a GCF, so I'm going to do n and then uh, n minus 2. Okay, and then I'm going to have uh, the 4 over n minus 2. <clears throat> so to make like denominators, um, let's see. So this first one is going to need n minus 2 to be like the others. So put that in the numerator and the denominator. Um, this one has everything, so I don't, I'm not going to change it. Uh, this one is going to need an n. I'm going to multiply by n in the numerator and denominator. Okay, so that's going to make all of the denominators the same, n times n minus 2. So now that I have those like denominators, because this is an, this is an equation, that's the only time you cancel out your like denominators when you're solving an equation. Um, so now what I have is n minus 2 plus uh, 4n plus 8. See why I didn't uh, factor out the GCF? Because I'm just going to have to combine like terms now. Um, so the parentheses would be in the way. Uh, equals 4n. So you want to always combine any like terms you have on the same side of the equation. So I have n and 4n, so that's going to be 5n. I have negative 2 and 8, so that's going to be positive 6, and that equals 4n. Now I'm looking for like terms on opposite sides of the equation. I see I have 5n and 4n. Those need to get together. Um, I could subtract 4n from both sides, but that's going to leave 0 over here. I don't have n squared and n, so I don't need 0 on one side. Uh, I'm trying to get n by itself, so it will be easiest to subtract 5n from both sides. That's going to give me 6 is equal to negative n. And then I would just divide both sides by negative 1. OK, so that's going to give me uh, negative 6 is equal to n. So that is the answer. Uh, now, as far as excluded values, once I factored it, uh, that's a good time to look for excluded values. I see two of them. n cannot equal 0, OK, because of the n. And n, whoops, I shouldn't have put a circle around it yet. n cannot equal 2 because of the n minus 2. So these are my excluded values. All right, that's it for number 4. Looks like that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful, and I will see you on the next video.